right, here it is, people. The Headrush MK2 25,000 watt full range flat response guitar cabinet. Generation 2, the unboxing. As the other videos show, it's only three handles. There isn't one on the top. Huge oversight. Who the hell wants to have the logo and not have to be able to pick it up? You gotta flip it over. Pain in the ass. However, unlike the former model, it is different than the Alto speaker. Alto and Headrush are the same company. However, these inputs are line only. There's no switch for a microphone. And if you notice on the Alto, the layout is different. It's more uh, for a stand up, like a PA, whereas this is mainly laid out so that you use it as a monitor. So that's the unboxing. I'm assuming there's a power cable in here. Well, that's pretty. Heavy gauge power compared to a normal computer or PC, so. Not sure that that has to do with the amplification. Of the, not sure if that has to do with the amplifier or what, but that is substantially thicker than a normal power cord. And it goes up on the top. Here's a view of the uh, head rush in monitor mode. Um, I prefer to stand it up. And then uh, both the knobs go to 11, leave it around 10, it'll clip randomly, uh, or turn your input volume down. Uh, but don't keep it so it's red consistently. Got a line out for one and two, or mixed. Um, I didn't test if it increases the volume when you adjust the volume. Hopefully it doesn't because uh, that's annoying, especially if you want to turn up your monitor and not the front of the house at the same time. Got your input line one and two that both accept XLR or your instrument cable quarter inch jack. The high pass button cuts out the bass at 100 hertz. So if you're looking for pure mid-range, that raw guitar sound, probably want to hit that. If you're like me, you leave it out, you like the bass. It's my opinion that the ground button should always be pushed in. So if you're in a venue with dirty power, you don't have any of that noise when you're not playing. Unless you're in a punk band and you want all that noise. The Bluetooth volume also goes to 11, but the same as the above. If you keep it at 10, it will keep it from clipping all the time. So you're gonna hold and push the Bluetooth button down until it blinks blue. And then once that happens, you're gonna look on your phone or whatever you're using for the FRFR112 MK2 and then pair. Works like any other Bluetooth device. Once it's paired, it will stay solid. And when you're playing music, once it goes red, that means you're starting the clip. Oh, it does have clip protection. All right, here's a demo of the Headrush MK2 Bluetooth. <laughs> Okay, here's a comparison demo against the Mackie SRM 212V class. Everything's the same volume maxed out before it clips. <laughs> Okay, here's a demo of the 
Headrush MK2 with guitar. This is my pit driver amp setting. You can download off the uh, Headrush cloud. And this is my uh, my tune, Skate Thrash. <laughs> Here's a demo of the uh, Mackie SRM V-Class 212. Same setting, same amp, everything, nothing changed, just plugged into a different speaker. Here's the Headbrush and the Mackie together in stereo, which sounds absolutely amazing. I had these maxed out. Obviously, I can't do that on the microphone because it would just clip out. But I literally had the ceiling panels raining snow that it was so loud. And it's amazing. My, my ears are still ringing. I think that the Headbrush is good if you like uh, that flat. The uh, best way I can describe it is a clean, natural tone. If, if you like a little more oomph to it, um, definitely the Mackie has the, uh, the winning edge there. I, I don't think you can go wrong. It depends on the sound you're looking for, but I will say this. If you buy both of them and you put them together, they both shine in their own ways and it sounds absolutely amazing. And uh, I'll be keeping both. I'm not, I'm not getting rid of either one of them. At first I thought I might go one way or the other, uh, but I think the blend of these together is absolutely amazing. So here they are together. <laughs> So there you go. And just so you know, on the uh, Headrush MX-5 I'm using, I got the volume output on 6, and I have both the Headrush and the Mackie Channel 1 maxed out on 10. Uh, but you can't go wrong. For the money, I mean, the Headrush is literally less than half price. That's a great speaker. However, if you want to go all out, the Mackie, I think, does everything I, I could i probably use the eq to get it to sound like the the head rush if i wanted i like my tone to be a little bass heavy um and the head rush has a knob uh that you can push in to do a high pass filter and i didn't like the tone at all when that happened a lot i see a lot of people like that um but that's there um the all of these have had that open so it's been full range the whole time and the, the Mackie's just been on a flat EQ. So, there you go.